Hi everyone, I'm Winston, Technical Marketing at UFI Space. Today, I'm going to talk about Distributed Access Architecture, stands for DAA, what it is and how does that help the cable operators build their services. Before we talk about DAA, let's talk about the cable network history. When the cable network first came in during the mid 20th century, it was called Community Antenna Television, or CATV. The cable operators used antenna to provide TV programs to subscribers. It spread quickly across communities and rural areas in the U.S. and has been widely used for many years. Now, let's take a look at the components that are needed to create a cable TV network. The first part is the header. It's like the brains of operation, where all the signals are received from satellites and processed before transmitting to the subscribers. The second part is the coaxial cable that is responsible to deliver the analog signal over 100 kilometers from the head end to each household. However, there are some limitations with this architecture. Coaxial cable can lose signal strength over long distances. Therefore, in order to get the signal further, amplifiers are used. In addition, coaxial cables are more prone to wear and tear over time, requiring high maintenance and occasional replacement. As technology continues to advance, newer solutions like hybrid fiber coaxial are being adopted to address some of these limitations. One significant difference of HFC network compared to traditional cable networks is the use of fiber cable between the head end and the HFC node as opposed to coaxial cable. There are a few benefits with upgrading to analog fiber. First, the bandwidth has been improved significantly to multiple gigabits per second. Second, Analog fiber provides a more stable and reliable transmission compared to coaxial cable in the traditional cable system. Third, the HFC network occupies more portion of the spectrum, which can cover up to 110 analog channels compared to the traditional cable network, which only has the capacity for 60 channels. Last, the HFC network requires less maintenance compared to coaxial cable. As internet became more popular in the 1980s, the demand of data surged and cable operators started to use existing cable infrastructure to provide data service. There are two components that provide data service. Let's talk about the main roles of CMTS and EdgeQualm in HFC network architecture. The Cable Modem Termination System, or CMTS, is a critical function in an HFC network. Its primary function is to meticulously oversee and handle the data traffic between the network's central hub and cable modem at subscriber's site. The EdgeQualm stands for Quadrature Amplitude Modulation, which is responsible for delivering video content to the cable setup boxes. Later on, advanced technology has led to the development of Converged Cable Access Platform. CCAP represents a significant achievement cable network architecture. By combining CMTS and EdgeQualm function together, CCAP allows cable operators to effectively deliver both data and video services, such as video on demand and interactive sessions, and reduce equipment and maintenance costs. As technology continues to evolve, many cable systems have shifted toward digital and internet-oriented technologies offering a broader range of services beyond traditional TV. In order to satisfy the growing bandwidth demand, there is a need for more service groups. In such condition, having a CCAP at the head end may no longer accommodate the growth of the service groups. Even putting more edge devices will put a strain on head end. Therefore, cable operators have been seeking ways to enhance network performance, efficiency, and more importantly, improve user experiences. This is where DAA comes into play. The biggest difference comparing DAA from HFC is that DAA relocates some functionality of CCAP to the remote node, closer to the subscriber's location and adopts digital fiber. The remote file architecture relocates file functionality, including modulation and demodulation, to the remote node. By adopting to digital fiber, it reduces costs extend signal range, improves signal-to-noise ratio, and supports higher order modulation needed for DOCSIS 3.1 standard. According to research, the typical spacing between wavelength in analog optics in HFC is 100 GHz. 
which can allow up to 40 wavelengths on a single fiber. The spacing for digital wavelength is 25 GHz or less, which can allow more than 160 wavelengths in the DAA networks. Remote MacFi architecture further moves Mac layer to the remote node closer to subscriber's location. By doing so, the remote node can gain a more unified control and management over the network. There won't be as much space required in a central hub, because the hub will be hosting only generic servers and routers to manage and control the network, virtualizing the CCAP and CMTS. In addition to adoption of DAA architecture and digital optic, cable operators can also take advantage of Ethernet in their networks. Ethernet infrastructure offers efficient and cost-effective data delivery. Routers can be deployed in a head-end to aggregate traffic between CCAP and remote nodes. Time synchronization requirements resulting from the separation of MAC and FI layer in the DAA networks can also be fulfilled using PTP and SyncE provided by Ethernet technology. As cable operators adopt Ethernet in the DAA, it increases scalability and flexibility, simplify the expansion of cable networks in response to growing demand. UV space, S9500 and S9600 series are powerful aggregation routers that follow open disaggregated methodologies and utilize Ethernet-based PDB protocol, ranging from 1G to 400G. These routers provide cable operators with high-capacity platforms to support numerous subscriptions and efficiently aggregate traffic within DAA architecture. This is an introduction of DAA architecture and cable networks. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel, follow us on LinkedIn, or contact UV Space to learn more about our latest solution for open networking and other ways to build an open transport network.